for my investing, I store up cash for, for a stock that I want to buy. So what does that mean? I store up cash because when it comes to a point that this stock is expensive, I just keep on shoring up cash, shoring up cash, shoring up cash, shoring up cash. But as I start shoring up cash, uh, later on when the stock becomes relatively cheaper, I start buying. Good afternoon guys, just finished. Uh, we went to this uh, cloud forest over there, I'm not, I'm not sure if you see it. But we went to the cloud forest, what else, what's the other place that we went to? Flower Dome. The Flower Dome. It's my first time here. Uh, I, I normally would go uh, in Gardens by the Bay over here, but it's my first time to go actually inside. My wife has been there, how many times have you been inside? Second, Second time. So we saw the cloud forest and we saw uh, the Flower Dome. There, I want to talk about undervalued stocks. Before that, any tips first for people who have their bonuses right now? Live. What? Save it! Should they put all of their bonuses in the stock market? If it's extra and it's something that you don't have any more debt, why not? Test it. Okay. <laughs> so, as what, as what my wife said, no, if you have your bonuses, put a large chunk of it right now especially if you're employed and especially if you don't have as, as much savings yet and investments put as much of it in the stock market so that as you put your extra money it allows you to build assets assets as it build assets for you it gives you the ability to earn more later on so we now have people online Catherine Oliveros hello to you good afternoon what I want to talk about is if you're a long-term investor, now I'm not speaking to traders right now, no, because we do a lot of videos man, for traders. But I want to set, uh, I want to set the tone of this video, which will be for people who want to be investing for the long term. So, for those who've been following, yeah, but we lost. Are we lost? I want to be lost with you, so it's okay. okay so where do we go? Okay, so guys, as far as it can be, uh, so. If you are an investor, it's very, very important, of course, that you buy stocks that are uh, good, that are growing, that have the ability later on to spit out more money because the business model is really good. But you have to remember, you have to be very, very sensitive also in the price that you want to buy it. It's very important that you know the specific valuations of the company that you are buying. You know that the company that you are buying should be at a certain point in time very, very, very cheap as well. Think about this. Think about Jollibee and I, I give Jollibee as an example uh, to all of you because Jollibee at the end of the day is a very very good company it's a company that's growing it's a company that has the ability to make more later on as, as you've seen you know, they've been growing uh, by leaps and bounds not just in the Philippines but they're growing leaps and bounds across uh, a lot of markets as well and they're not just expanding their own brand they're building and buying up other brands as well so that's very very good however from a valuation standpoint Jollibee is expensive the, t the trick on how you can make money off of this, of um, stocks that are good growing but are expensive is what I normally do is I store up cash now, meaning for my investing, uh, for my investing I store up cash for, for a stock that I want to buy. So what does that mean? I store up cash because when it comes to a point that this stock is expensive, I just keep on shoring up cash, shoring up cash, shoring up cash, shoring up cash. But as I start shoring up cash, uh, later on when the stock becomes relatively cheaper, I start buying. So there are a lot of ways to determine the methodology of how a stock is cheap. No? But first of all, you must know from a certain benchmark if a stock is very, very cheap. Uh, it's very, very cheap as well. So that's one. Number two is this. Uh, when it becomes very, very cheap, it gives you also an idea that from a point where you want to buy it that's why the technique no, when you are buying stocks that are that you want to hold for the long term is that it has to be at a point where if you buy it today how many years will it be when you need the money that as when you need the money it becomes already uh, undervalued still so the way you compute for the valuations of the stock should be based on number one when when do you need it because for example I buy Jollibee today at 2018 uh, if I want to sell at 2023, I need to compute what's the value of Jollibee by 2023. So that's how you do it. It's It should be based on the valuation model that you're putting based on the timeline that you have as well. So there, let me greet some people first. Uh, 
you have Carlo Espino. How do you start? I created a lot of videos already you know, about how you start investing, but there's it's all in YouTube already how you can uh, start trading and investing in the market. But ultimately, the best way for you to win is number one, before you even buy a stock, you need to know, uh, why am I buying it? What's the main reason why I'm buying it? Am I buying it as a trader? Am I buying it as a as an investor? Am I buying it because I'm buying it because the stock is good, because it's undervalued, because it's cheap as of this point in time? Then after buying it, you need to have you need to set conditions also. Uh, why am I sell? Why am I holding on to it? Because you have to understand. I mentioned over and over and over again that the stock market is all about emotions. That since it's all about emotions, when it goes down, when it dips. What will cause you not to sell? What will cause you to hold the stock? What will cause you that amidst all of the emotions going on, you are not selling, you are not panicking, you are not being scared. Or on the flip side, please remember there's two emotions going on. But on the flip side, that if it's doing so well, your stock is doing so well, you are earning. The temptation there is you might sell too early. And I've seen so many people sell too early on amazing stocks that have reaped so much uh, benefits over the long term. So. What you need to also ask yourself if you want to trade and you invest in the market is what will cost you later on if you own the stock already, kailan ka magbibenta? And one way also, no, uh, if you are a long-term investor is you sell when it becomes overvalued already. You sell when from, from the stock that you are computing, as you start to compute it, the stock rises up in value and it becomes relatively more expensive already than what it's supposed to be based on the timeline that you have. That's when you start to sell. So, yun. Para sa akin, Carlos Espino, if uh, it comes to a point where I'm not too sure yet what I'm supposed to buy, I'm not gonna buy at all. Do not try to guess, do not try to speculate, do not try to execute if you're not sure of what's happening. Next, Mary Rose Navarro, happy, happy Friday to you as well. Marvin Exia, hello. Uh, then you have, shout out to you Marvin Exia, nagpapa shout out. Shet Rilio, good evening. Please comment by the way, no name, where you're from. And then I'll try to accommodate a couple more questions. We're just going back to Marina Bay Sands, then after that, I'm the, that's when the Facebook Live ends as well. Uh, Joan Howe from Baguio City, Melba Esperanda. Hello to you. Yeah, thank you so much for greeting me and my wife. Tommy Lee asking if Primex is undervalued. The thing about Primex, no, it's not part of my watch list for investing. So this is what I do, by the way. Naka split. I have a watch list for investing. I have a watch list also for trading so for trading my trigger is always technicals for investing uh, it's fundamental so based on my analysis now it's not fundamental it's not it does not fit my fundamental parameter so I'm not really watching out for Primex so I'm not too sure if it's undervalued or not but what I do know is from a growth perspective it's not something that I want as much next ko ano ko muna words of wisdom go What's your words of wisdom? I don't know. I like no words of wisdom. No. no words of wisdom. No words of wisdom. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Nel Francisco. Hi, Sir Marvin. Pa shout out to my friends, con traders from Paris and France. Where are we going? No, I'm in Thank you. Straight. Hmm. We go here? I want you to do the Bayfront MRT. Okay, next. Uh, we have Vance Gomez from France. Hello to you, EP Del Rosario, Voltaire Bore from Saudi Arabia. Voltaire Bore, uh, generally speaking, no, a lot of the banks right now, because it has dropped in price, a lot of them are undervalued. But you just need to know, based on your computations and parameters, what will be the value, the fair value of, of the stock based on your timeline. But Generally speaking, based on the assets that they have and the price that it's trading, a lot of them are cheap. That's why you saw Security Bank, BDO, BBI, uh, Metro Bank start to bounce when it hit a certain level, when it started to when it started to drop. There. Nelson Lim. MPI undervalued. Oh, naman. Super, 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 super. Uh, MPI has been battered so much. MPI has dropped so much that even at 4.3, yes. It's super, super, super attractive from a valuation standard. Please remember, MPI is a defensive company, but it's not just a defensive company. A lot of its subsidiaries are earning well. A lot of its subsidiaries are earning uh, relatively good, no? And their earnings are increasing. From where we are right now, it's super uh, undervalued. As it's undervalued, it gives you a perspective that, hey, if you hold it for the long term, buy it at cheap prices, that's where the upside will uh, continue to, I guess, give you a larger degree of earnings there drew Bene are we going the right way 
Okay, we might, we might, we might be lost, but okay lang. I'm willing to get lost with you. Let's get lost together. Drew, Drew Benasa from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Brian Altar, hello to you. Shout out to you. Meg Villafria, young Villafria is asking for Meg. Kalo ko Meg Villafria. Mega World, for me, ah, and for those who are attending tonight for Stock Smart here, where we talk about valuations. Uh, the thing about that is this, eh. Uh, one of the things that I look out for and what's very, very important to me is if I want to buy a stock for the long term, I want the predictability of earnings. The more predictable the earnings are, the better. The more predictable the earnings are, I know that over the long term, it will just continue to earn, 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 earn. The problem with Mega World though is this. Uh, it's earnings uh, through the years. There are years na mataas, there are years na mababa, but it's not as... Uh, it's not as consistent, it's not as predictable. And the problem with, you compare it, no? RLC, Ayala Land, Vista Land, all amazing companies with a lot of predictability. And that's what I look for. I want companies like that whose uh, earnings are very, 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 very predictable as well. So, there. Are we, are we last? I think it's here. Guys, and you know we're lost. So this is this is a problem of do, doing doing a raw video. Let's try this. This is a problem of doing a raw video. You're you're lost. <laughs> you get lost, and it's part. It gets documented uh, in this. So I don't know kung mak o balik kami kagad, cause we're lost. But anyways, okay lang, okay lang. As long as may Facebook Live, huh? So we came from there. We went here, and we ended back there again, and we're we're back to where we are. Uh, you have Dan John from Makati, hello to you. Mendoza Reggie from Riyadh. Alden Buenaventura, hello. Hello down to you. Sabi ni Alden from Hong Kong. Hello. Can you give him a Cantonese greeting? Hello. <laughs> uh, Mandarin greeting. <laughs> Same. Mandarin, ni hao naman. Ni hao. Go. So, for those who don't know, my wife is... Uh, Chinese as well. So hello, Aldrin. For ah no, sorry, he's from the UK. Aldrin Ben Aldrin Benaventura is not HK UK. HK. Oh, but you mo nangano British. I don't know. British British. Good day, mate. That's not even British. Dapat ano? Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you, Aldrin. Top. Grace Garcia. Oops, what happened? Uh, Grace Garcia is now undervalued. Uh, it's not. Uh, the thing about now is it doesn't also have predictability of earnings. Uh, for those who've been following the videos, look at it. I've mentioned that the only movement now has is because of the news that it could have been the third player. But fundamentally speaking, wala eh. So now stock has dropped, but it does not mean it's cheap. It does not mean it's undervalued. And it does not mean it has the ability to move higher pa later on. Please remember, no? The movement from 15, 17, 19 was all because of the possibility that it could be the third player. That now it has dropped. It did not change any of the fundamentals. Eh? The fundamentals for the better has not changed. The fundamentals also, uh, in terms of it, the grading hasn't changed. It just stayed where it was. Now the question is, are you willing to buy it at two, at three pesos? Because at two, at three pesos with the lack of earnings, it might not be as attractive yet. So there, Garcia, Grace Rondina Garcia. Lander Makapagal. So long term ba? Both of them are good long term companies, no? SM Prime and Ali. Uh, the only question there is this. Are you willing for Ali and SM Prime? Uh, the question now is when it comes to valuations, at what price are you willing to buy them? Again, I'll say this over and over again. For investing, it's not just about a good company, which is SM Prime and Ali. It's all about a good company at a good price. So for me, uh, comparing them head to head, Ali at 38 and SM Prime when it hit around 31. Uh, 30, from, uh, from a technical level, 31 for SM Prime is a very, very strong support. 38 for uh, Ali is also a, a support, but 36 is a stronger support. But from a valuation standpoint, head to head, if I'll compare them, uh, Ali is cheaper. So that's how you can actually peg it and that's how you can actually analyze it uh, as well. Next, Artenio Haduka, do you cut loss or? Of course, if you, uh, by the way, no. This video is all about investing. If you're investing, the only time you sell or you cut loss is when the fundamentals change. That's one. If you are trading, naman, if your support levels 
get hit, it drops down. No matter if you are winning or losing, I sell. So if nagkataon, it drops the support, then it's a position for me that I'm not making money off of that. I still sell. But the goal for all of this no, is for you to win. As you win, you maximize it. When you lose, you sell and you, uh, I guess you sell quickly. The problem is sometimes when we lose, we hold on to it for a very, very long period of time. But as we lose, no, we hold on to losing positions uh, very, very long. And sayang. Uh, it's not something very, very fruitful also. There. Uh, oh, pakibate. I'm resting my voice. Hi, yo, Julio. From? Okay. This. Uh, okay, Drew. Benasa asking for a nickel. No, we'll try to do this from a trading perspective. I'll, I'll try to include that in stocks by request. But as for the fundamentals, if you've been following my previous videos, I'm not a good, I'm not a big fan of mining because it lacks uh, the predictability of income. So that's very, very important. The predictability of income should be paramount if you want to hold on to it for the long term. But if you're trading, follow the news and then use your technicals. But for me, I don't really follow the news. I just use the technicals. Next, uh, Edward Akoy, I meant I already answered your question about SM Prime Holdings, but you have to make the valuations based on you. Uh. Edson Mendoza, any insights on Bloom? Uh, the thing about Bloom is ano, eh, din, eh, similar to a lot of the companies that I've mentioned. It's harder to predict uh, their earnings. There are years na sobrang taas ng earnings. There are years na negative naman sila. There are years na tama lang. So it lacks the condition na meron siyang predictability, predictability for earnings. So what does that mean? How do you spin it naman? Uh, for Bloom, for me, Bloom is for trading, not for investing. Bloom is for trading that you just mix that. If it starts to earn good, people have interest, plot the charts. If it shows you a reversal, buy. But if I'm gonna hold on to it for the long term, it does not fit my criteria for that. Uh, Chet Rilio from Doha, Qatar. I'm gonna go back there to Doha for Stock Smarts. So I hope to see you guys soon. Uh, Dan Ehon asking for BDO and JFC. Uh, both of them fit my characteristics for stocks that can be held for the long term. They, they fit it very, 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 very well. So all of the characteristics that I need and want for stocks for the long term, uh, pasok na pasok yung video on Jollibee. The only, the only thing that we need to consider is, uh, are, you, are you willing to hold on to it? Uh, or at what price are you willing to buy it? Again, you must be sensitive of buying it if it's relatively cheap. So there. Uh, next. EP Del Rosario about Security Bank. Security Bank. What? Ah. EP, go to marvingirma.com. In marvingirma.com, I had an extensive blog about it where I wrote about what makes security banks stand out and why is it also amazing for the long term. But at the end of the day, they're a good company. As of this point in time, lalo na nung 130 siya, sobrang mura ng security bank also. Next, uh, Enrico, ah, nagtag lang siya. Enrico Tabing, Nelson Lim, will Max recover in a, and soar, soar back to 16? How long do you think will it take? So, uh, Medyo market movement na yung tinatanong mo, no? Uh, the thing about that, when you're asking about market movement, it's basically, ano na yan, uh, what, what the technicals will dictate. So, for it to actually reverse and move up, we must wait from a technical perspective for the trend to shift and turn from bearish to bullish. So, there. Uh, how long will it take? I don't know, eh. Uh, if, if you've been following stocks by request, I would always tell you that a stock that's in a downtrend will continue to go down until something changes, something shifts, until something will uh, move in a certain direction. Brian Altar, thank you sir. Shao Cabanilla asking for Seb. Seb is in trouble, why? Uh, oil prices are down, are, are up. Not as, uh, it dropped also the past few weeks, but at a certain point, no, it really hasn't, uh, it, it, please remember for airline companies, majority of their expenses come from fuel. So if oil prices are up, their margins will be smaller. So until, until it becomes at a point where oil prices are low or they, they increase a lot of their transactions, uh, Cebu Pacific might not be as good. That's why if you're looking at the trend right now, it's it's pretty much down. So, there. Uh, hi, sir, from Manila BDO, please. I already answered video. Uh, Sagario Helio. Um, sir Marvin, based on technicals, is the, the downtrend over? What what particular stock? Can you give me a stock that you're talking about now? The downtrend is over. How about SEC? Uh, SEC, no? Uh, their income wasn't as good right now, so yun lang, from a fundamental span standpoint, if the income is not as good, how can people buy? And it, again, yun, it lacks anything mining, that's the predict predictability of income from Grace Delima. Dino Lozada from where CA? Hi, 
California. California, hindi Kalamba. <laughs> Dina Kalamba Lazada. Laguna. Kalamba Laguna no naman daw eh. Uh, Mary Rose Navarro, Sir Marvin, malaki na po loss yung satel, mostly half na po, benta ko na po ba? Depende sa'yo yun. Depending on what your trading plan will be, no? But what I can tell you is this, fundamentally speaking, it's not so good right now. Uh, they're losing market share from Globe, earnings are dropping, and again, they, they held on too long to the, te to the traditional telco business, which I don't understand nga, people are talking, of, there's so much, there's so much uh, talk and flack about the telco industry, whereas the whole fight right now is... Look at what Globe is doing. Globe is not just a telecom company anymore. I say this all the time. Globe is a data company. Globe is a tech company. Globe is a fintech company. Globe is a media company. That's why Globe is winning it and that's why Globe will beat the competition because they're very, very good to adapt and innovate. Tell, on the other hand, malapa, they're not yet there. They're very, very far from innovating yet and the, and the income has been declining. For those who've been following our Stock Smart seminars and those who've attended 2012, 2013, 2014, I showed you that 2013 Palang was already the sell signal for investors. That's why sometimes investors can sell quickly also. Why? Because the sell signals would emerge also when, when income is not so good, that's when you can actually sell. So by the way guys, no, coming from over there, you see that dome? So we've walked, I don't know how long have we walked already, but I came from there, that dome, and we're now over here, so the length from there to here is how much we've walked and how long we've been doing this Facebook Live already, but it's always fun. Hi Asin, Rabuya. Hi Marvin, any, any stock pick to buy? The answer there is this, eh? what, based on your parameters, either technicals or fundamentals, what, what's your strategy? What's something that can fit and work from your buy and sell strategy? And that's how you do it. You don't, if, if you follow what I say, then I've failed you. Why? The strength of how you can make money in the market is not to follow what I tell you, but that you get to craft your own buy and sell signals from it. And that's the strength, and that's how you win in the markets, and that's how you can do it for the long term. Uh, Catherine Oliveros, Yvonne, Yvonne, may message si Catherine Oliveros ayo. And I want you to read this. You're the one who's supposed to read this. Why? Hey, hello. Read it first. I'm cute, oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is is or a basura stock? Uh, it's not earning so good. Um, I actually don't use the term basura and blue chip. I really use the term fundamentals more. Please pay more attention to fundamentals than the terms, the labels, basura or blue chip. That's very very important. Uh, yung owner nga ng ano eh, owner ng or. Lagi na kita na sa Tobis State sa Shangri La Forte. So uh, interesting. You can ask them there. Uh, Noel Jose. Hi Marvin, it's the right time to buy Ali. The one from Dubai. I, I made a video about Ali. Uh, for if you're asking it from a technical point of view, no, I made a video about Ali. Uh, it's in YouTube and in Facebook. Uh, noting specific areas where you're supposed to buy if you are a position trader. So we're now in Marina Bay Sands, guys. Inside, inside Marina Bay Sands. So, <laughs> so as of, so to answer that. Watch out for the moving averages. Watch out for the 200-day moving average. So if it stays above that, it becomes a buy for a lot of position traders out there. Uh, for people who are looking at support, 36, 38 are, are major important supports for Ayala Land. Hello to you, uh, Noel from Dubai. Uh, Salta Villanueva, this is in Marina Bay. Grace with Rivera, Cell, cell phone na mo. This is a Samsung S8. Yeah, Samsung S8. Uh, which which indicator do I use from Brian Altar? I use different indicators depending on uh, depending on the condition. Meaning, uh, if the, if the market is oversold, I use a set of different oversold uh, indicators that help me determine which which stock is, is the most oversold. If the market is zooming up, I want to use momentum oscillators because I want to know which stocks are moving the fastest and biggest and has the ability to go up higher. If I want to trade the trend. I draw my own trend line. So the answer to that is this. It depends. That's why nga iba iba siya because they work for certain conditions. They work for different conditions as well. So there. Few more questions. Lander makapagal. Uh, hopefully magkaroon ng stock smart sa Bahrain. If someone will organize it in Bahrain, I'm gonna go to Bahrain. Uh, Lander. JG Summit. Uh, I have a video about this. I'm gonna post it probably when I when I land in Manila. But basically. JG Summit is hit because of URC. JG Summit is hit also because of uh, Cebu Pacific, and JG Summit is hit also because of its the shares that it owns with PLDT. Uh, Mildred Miranda, hello. X 
same thing, technicals downtrend, X fundamentals, they're starting to lose their they lost money. So you can't really expect a stock who is losing money also to be something that's fundamentally good for the long term. Next. Oh, Paul Adrian Mendoza, same question about X. Uh, Mark Gomez. Wow, a lot of questions. Hi sir from Milan. I'm a long-term investor. So ngayon, you don't want to use the escalator. So ngayon, uh, it's, it's okay, it's okay. I have a BPI, GT Capital, MBT. I want to sell half to take profit and wait. Uh, please remember, uh, taking profits is not a, is not a, should not be based on if you are earning or not. Taking profits should be based on whether uh, there are sell signals emerging and coming out. By the way, this is a very very steep escalator. My, my wife is a bit scared of mga steep escalators. It's a bit steep because it's so And you're scared? Why are you scared? We're safe. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to save you. So there. Do not sell just because you think you're making money. Do not sell just because you think you're losing money. Sell because your technical triggers have been sold. Ako, I personally sell. Uh, when I sell, I sell everything already. Firm conviction that I know that, hey, my analysis, I'm going to follow my analysis. Is it correct all the time? Siyempre hindi. You also make mistakes. There's only one person that's perfect and that's my wife. Na hindi na nakatingin. So, <laughs> so that, that's the thing. Next. Uh, TBGI, I don't know, no. I only see TG, TBGI from a chart perspective. But uh, the only reason, again, it also moved was because of the news that it could possibly be the third player. That's just basically it. Without that news, wala na siya news. There's no shot, there's no chance for it to go up. And yes, there's something fundamentally sound that will make it go up. TBGI moved based on sentiment. TBGI moved because of news. TBGI moved not because there was a lot of earnings going on, but TBGI moved just because of the hope that it could possibly be the third player. Next, Aljon Alfonso. Will CHP reverse? Ah, CHP is losing money. How can a company reverse? How can the trend reverse if they're losing money, they even close their company in Davao, their plant in Davao, then they're laying off people pa. So it's not so good yet. So there, uh, it's 4.40 guys. I'm gonna have stock smarts here in Singapore in the next two hours. It's the third day of our sessions where we're gonna talk about valuations. That's why yeah, it's, uh, it's very, very cool, no? very, very nice to have uh, sessions like this because it gives you a firmer understanding on what you're supposed to do. So, ayun, I'm back in Marina Bay, Sands. We're gonna have merienda already. To those na hindi ko nabasa lahat ng messages nyo, thank you so much for sending the message. It's been a cool uh, journey with you guys here. This entire walk. Kaya ako mapayat kasi lakad lang, puro lakad lang. Ano lang, push lang ng push. Oh, hindi gwapo, kailangan hindi chubby. So, before we close, final words. Madami, ba, madami kang fans eh. Nagulat ako. People like her more. O game. Pero kasi ayaw niyo sa video. Weird nga. Ayaw niyo sa video. Bakit ka low bat? That's it? Any words of inspiration? Invest now? Okay, that's it. Please, but guys, comment below if you have any questions and I'll try to make videos from that naman. Uh, if you like this live videos more, yung lakad lakad, anywhere, no, no script, no anything, I'm gonna answer your questions. We're gonna do more of this over and over and over and over and over and over again. So, I guess that's it. Uh, two, last two seminars for the year, Stock Smart Singapore, happening all throughout the weekend, and Stock Smart Manila, which is happening uh, when I get back, December 8, 9, and we will end the year December 15. Top 10 stocks for 2019. So if you don't know yet what you want to position on for 2019, that's what we're going to talk about December 15. It's not just going to be me. We have a lot of guests in store who will share their own insights on trading and investing the market as well. So that's it for now. Marvin Germo in Shops at Marina Bay. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. To all attending later, see you. God bless you. Have a great afternoon ahead. God bless. Bye-bye.